Uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is Daniel Bizak. It's a pleasure to be with you for this 19th, already 19th Katia Jewel Talk. Um, today um, we will um, talk about uh, parametric solid reconstruction from a, a scan, from um, a part. Let's, uh, let me show you the part. Uh, the, 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 the talk will last around 20 minutes today. So this is a part, okay? I don't know, I hope you can see it. It's a plastic part. And um, we don't have CAD model, of course. Um, by the way, it's, it's just um, the deflection shield, you know, the deflection shield of my uh, lawn mower. Okay, so when I cut my grass, I, I can I can put away the the, the grass. Okay, so it, it might be broken, and I have no CAD model. And the idea is that how can I reconstruct the CAD model out of this plastic part as quickly as possible, and then print uh, a spare part that I will be able to replace. Uh, on my uh, lawn mower. Okay, that's the idea. So let's start to see how we do that. Okay, the very first things we do, you see, we have a, a scanner, the hand held scanner, and we put the part like that on a build tray. We put stickers, white stickers. Why? Because the, uh, the scanner needs those white stickers to be able to correlate, to align the multiple views when we are turning around the part and make one single uh, consolidated scan data out of those multiple views, okay? So this is it. So let's, let's continue. So this is my scan. As you can see, I have, I have my laptop, which is connected to the scanner. And I can see on the screen of my laptop what I'm just scanning. So I have an echo. On my um, on my laptop of what I'm doing, so I can check that I I completely scan the part. There is no shadow area, and um, the the scan data that I will provide will be uh, useful and can be used in in cut here. By the way, I want to thank uh, Louis, Amin, and Patrick who did this very very nice content, very cool content. You will see. Okay, you can see here what is happening on the on the on, during the scan. Here we are, and now we are in cut here. So what I just do, I will open. Um, the scanner can provide both an OBG file or an, an STL file. You will see the difference. If I open the OBG file with my assembly design um, app, I will see exactly what I scanned. So the OBG convey color. So I can get a fully colored scan. With, and you will also notice the markers, which are white. Okay. So this is one way of importing the data. Uh, but to, be, to do the reconstruction of the solid, I will uh, just need the, the STL, the tessellated data made of triangles. So um, I will just create a new um, uh, geometrical set or 3D part, and I will um, drag and drop the, the STL file from the directory when we, when, where it was located on my laptop to the Katia session. So here, here we go. I take my STL file, drag and drop in my geometrical set. So here we are. This is what we will work on. Okay. Uh, I'm using an app called Katia Digital Shade Preparation, which is in a um, 3D Experience Katia role. A role is a set of application. And this 3D Experience Katia role called Reverse Engineer, good name, at least it's, it makes sense. Uh, Self-explanatory. Uh, I have two, two apps I will use, Katia Digital Shade Preparation, Katia digitized shape to surface, but also you will see, I will, I will use part design, the solid modeling capability of 3 experience Katia. Let's see how, how it works. Very important. So there are not that many points. It's a small part. Huh? Um, you, you see the size. It's uh, almost 100,000 points and 200,000 triangles. You can see it on the statistics of the import results. Here we go. Here we are. And uh, I will I will position my scan data. For example, position this this guy here on the X Y plane just to, to be more convenient for me to work. And uh, once uh, I did that, I will start to reconstruct the CAD model. I'm using here the very last version of 3D Experience Katia called 2022X. Uh, it's available on the cloud as well, of course. I'm using the cloud version here. And um, let's start by using this new capability introduced in 2022X which is a wizard uh, to reconstruct very quickly a solid model, a parametric solid model out of a scan data with a wizard, which guide me as a dummy user, which, guide, which is guiding me to reconstruct the CAD model. Let's see uh, how this smart application can help you. 
So I, I, I switch application. I go to digitize shape to surface now. And the very first things I will do um, is enter into this new wizard, mechanical shape wizard. We can call it prismatic shape reconstruction wizard if you prefer. It's really aimed at reconstructing a solid out of a prismatic part which has been scanned, okay? Here, it, here you see the wizard. So I define first, uh, Katia will help me to com compute the bounding box and create it at the design start of my uh, reconstruction because the idea is very simple, okay? You have a part, this guy, this guy, you compute the bounding box, a solid, and then you will create all those surfaces here and split the solid, the bounding box, by those surfaces. That's a very simple idea, but it's very, very straightforward and very easy to use and very, very, very fast. Here we are. Here we are. I just put a scaling ratio to have a bounding box a little bit bigger, but it doesn't matter because I will cut out. It's, I like, it's like a sculpture. I am a sculptor. I have my target and I will get remove a piece of material to finally uh, reach my target. Okay. This is the first solid. It's a pad, no big deal. It's, it has been automatically computed by that, by a Katia. And then I will just create my plane and, and split um, all the, the solid by those planes. So very first things to do, I have to recognize to recognize my, 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 uh, my plane. Here we are, okay. This is a bounding box, which has been split by a plane. I create a geometrical set. And I will create, start to recognize, um, recognize the plane. So I have inside the mechanical shape wizard the, the ability to, to activate the 3D primitive recognition. I can recognize sphere, cylinder, cone, but also of course pla planar surfaces. Here we are. So we found a, sur a planar surface. I just extrapolate a little bit the planar surface which has been created by recognizing that it is a plane. And I make it bigger because remember the idea is to split, to split, to split, to split, to split, to split. So I can at any time display or not the bounding box within the mechanical shape wizard. Very simple. Here I split, and of course I have to, to select what portion of the solid I keep. So here I will just select the arrow and, and turn the arrow on the opposite side to keep the material on the left side of the screen. Here we are. This is my arrow. Okay, keep this guy. Here we are. And the idea is very simple. It's to continue to do the job. So we can use recognition of, of uh, canonical surfaces for canonical shapes. Uh, we'll be able also to use much more complex uh, command to recreate a surface out of the scan and combine those, those commands. So you see, it's very simple, very straightforward. But even uh, again, not an expert in surfacing can do the job and, and the result will be a solid. Remember, a parametric with history solid. This is my second plane. So maybe I will speed up a little bit because it does not bring any, any added value, but you, you understand the idea. I can again turn on, I would hide or not my solid, my current, the current status of my solid as it is today after two splits. Here we are. And I, it's not accelerated. It's exactly the time it took to reconstruct the solid. Uh, so less than 15 minutes to reconstruct the solid uh, from the scan data. Okay, here, a new planar surface recognition. Here we are. Here in this case, there uh, will be a little bit more complex because uh, you, you have two, two planar faces. Okay, it's not one big planar face. So I create the very first one, I create the second one. I will then trim one by the other and use those two trimmed surfaces to split the current solid. Straightforward, simple. As you, what you can see here on the upper right corner is what we call the action pad. It's an accelerator. You can customize this action pad and you can, on top of the mechanical shape wizard, you can add any command you, you, you like to use um, uh, in conjunction with the mechanical shape wizard. By the way, it can be any command from generative shape design or part design or whatever, if you think you need them um, a lot of time. Don't put too much commands or icons in the action pad, otherwise it, it's not really a shortcut, okay? Put the most important ones, the one you are using the most. 
Here, this is my, my uh, split of, with my two surfaces, my two planar surfaces. Here we are. So you continue, you know, to converge to the ideal shape, which you would like to get a solid uh, out of. So this is my, um, now I will use for this, this surface here, which is not really planar, okay? It's more, it's, it's curved. I will use another command, which is called power fit, fitting capability of uh, 3D experience cut here. So I select with um, the, the, the mouse and uh, what we call a, a flood propagation. So I give an angle between two triangles and it will automatically propagate my selection to the adjacent triangles. So here we are. Just to select the one, the triangle that we'll use to, to, to create this freeform surface. It's very simple, it's very fast. Here we are. You will see that you can add inner boundaries. You can put a given tolerance. Let's start with a one millimeter tolerance, which is quite big, but let's just have a look at what it looks like. So the surface is big, but we don't care. Remember, this surface will be used to split the actual small, tiny solid that we have today. So you can see the deviation. You can look at the quality of the power fit surface that has been reconstructed. Let's now change a little bit the tolerance to make it tighter from one millimeter to 0 0.5. And you will see that the quality is still there. And I will achieve a mean deviation of 0 0.3, which is enough for my uh, for my loan uh, uh, um deflection shield. Here we are. This is the solid. I split it. Very straightforward process. Very simple. It's not rocket science. I agree, but it's very efficient. This is the solid. You know, I saw I, I'm really converging to the uh, the scan target shape. And now we continue to do some stuff. And typically, uh, what we can do now is um, to, to, to detail the design, but with classical capability of um, 3D experience Katia, like solid modeling fillet or solid modeling shell option, or you can add some other stuff. Okay. So now you are not really using anymore the, the scan data, except to get the value of some geometrical characteristic, for example, the value of a fillet. And I will just switch um, uh, up in this case to go to part design. I, I could have add some part design capability here in my uh, action pad, but let's, mo let's move to, to part design. As you see, 3D experience Katia is very easy to use, very easy to learn, especially for a Katia V5 user. So uh, I just change up and I go to the um, workbench or application part design. The mechanical shape wizard is still active, even if I am in part design, this is very cool. You can change the transparency of the current solid. I will just create, or let's say put in, um, in work, define in work object, the, the, this pad element. And now I'll create my fillet. So I could have measured um, the, the value of the fillet, or I can just check uh, um, keep the uh, scan data underneath to check if my fillet is, is, is okay versus um, the scan data. Or, by the way, I can even measure the fillet on the part itself if you still have the part. Here's the fillet. It's a very classical job. But you see, for uh, some, somebody who's used to use uh, our part design or generative design, it's very straightforward. It's why I call it super fast um, solid reconstruction from the scan data. It's not something that you, you, you will have a, a long learning time, a long learning curve. So I just here change the, the fillet of this guy, of this edge. Here we are. Okay, no problem. Maybe decrease a little bit. You see, I, I'm, I am here guided by this guy here. I see the, the brown boundary of the fillet. So I'm just visually looking if I'm far, far away or not far away from the fillet. Now I will continue to do my filleting on the other side of the part itself. Very, very similar approach. Take a 22 millimeter fillet. Looks good to me. And then finish by this vertical uh, edge that I would like to, to curve out. Here we are. Looks good to me. Okay. Finally, uh, I can now uh, try to, to 
make the part hollow because the part is of course not plain, okay? So we'll just use the shell command of part design to do so. This is simple stuff, but again, very efficient. Straightforward approach, a linear approach. It's not like a white paper, you know, you start from, you don't know how to start. Here it's very simple. You start from the, the outer solid bounding box and then you go up to match the actual scan data. Okay, this is my, uh, looks a little bit thin, okay? I think my thickness is bigger than that. I can measure on my part, again, if I still have the part, or measure on the scan data. If I have scanned the inner part, which was not the case here. In my, in my case, I just, we just scan the outer shape and measure the thickness because it was a constant thickness. This is the thickness of the shape of the part. And to do the details, which are here, which are important because those are the, the area which is fixing this guy to my loan mower, okay? So it's important. So either we measure or we use the scan data. Uh, if it, I don't spend too much time on the scan data because I still have the part, it's probably faster to just measure, okay? So here yeah, we create a sketch to create those details that I, I, I have to, to use. These are important again because it's an interface with the, uh, another part of my, uh, of my loan mower. So I have multiple ways of doing things like that. And now the idea is once I have my part, I will print it, okay? Uh, there is a trick uh, for this particular case is that my um, 3D printing machine is not as big, it's not big enough to make it at scale one, okay? So in fact, I will um, scale the part um, to have a reduced scale, half scale, 0 0.5 scale, okay? I will print it so it will be twice smaller, okay? But just to show you the principle how you can create a spare part on demand by scanning an existing part where you don't, when you don't have the CAD model to recreate a solid, to print this solid from a 3D experience CATIA. And you will see that we can we go even further. It, it, it's, it's, it's interesting. Don't, don't, don't leave me and continue up to the end of the, the presentation. So this is my small pads, which are here to make the connection with the rest, this is the part, the final part. And now I prepare the printing. I go to the 3D printing preparation app of 3D Experience Katia just to create a very nice and, and cool STL file that I will use because my printer is not um, is a very small printer. I could have driven my, my printer directly from 3D Experience Katia or Delmia um, powder bed fabrication app, app or machine deposition, uh, material deposition app. But here it's very simple. I just need to create an STL file and send the STL file to the software which is driving my 3D printing machine. It's a small one you will see on, on, on a couple of minutes of now. Now we are building with the FDM, this FDM machine, uh, the part. Uh, remember it's half scale, okay? Because my printer is not that big. And my, my colleague, so I mean, or Louis and, and Patrick will uh, just remove the part from, from the printer, just get rid of some details that need to be removed once they have been printed manually. Here it is, so Patrick does the job, thanks Patrick. Here we are, this is a printed part. By the way, we, we selected a, a plastic material which has the same color, so it will not, it will be okay when I will use this machine on my in my garden to cut the grass to, to be exact, accepted by my wife, by the way. Here we are. This is the final part. And now the idea is very simple. We will scan the printed part with the same scanner. Okay, here it is. As you can see, we do not have marker on the part, the part itself, because it's smaller. And um, every time we take a view of the scan, there is enough markers on the build tray to make the correlation. So we don't need to put to put uh, to stick markers on the part itself in this particular case as it is smaller. And again, we scan the data. And the good news is that we will import the scan data into Katia. Here we are. And we will align the scan data of the printed part with the CAD model. So this is the alignment process. We select an area um, of the um, scan data to be aligned with the part. They are not at the same position, okay, in space. Here we are. And I will use uh, an alignment by constraints because I know that some places are plain. So it's much, much, um, it's more accurate. We have also very nice 
fitting, best fit um, alignment capability. But here, to be accurate, it's easier because we have planes. Okay, we know that we have planes, so we'll select the the part or the area on the scan which correspond to some of the planes of the of the part to align them very very accurately. So this is first we do a primitive recognition to to recreate. So three planes that we will use to do this uh, constraining or constrained alignment. Here it is. And then we'll tell this plane is this face of the solid, this plane, this face of the solid. So it's called align with constraints. So it's a more accurate, OK? There is no uh, numerical algorithm to, to make things matching. Of course, there is a little bit of uh, um, accuracy when you are fitting a plane to the scan data. But um, the error is very, very small, very, very limited and, and controlled. Here it is. So this is alignment. We apply the alignment. And why we do so? We do so? Because now we want to compare, uh, the, we want to measure the deviation, the distance between the actual printed part and the CAD model that we reconstructed thanks to 3D experience Katia, digital shape preparation up inside the reverse engineer role and available on the cloud as well as on-premise. Now we'll just um, select not maybe everything, but some some area of the um, of the cloud would like to measure the deviation with um, with the CAD model. Here is the deviation analysis. I select my my CAD model. This is the outer skin. I scale, select my scan, and I will be able to measure the deviation. You see, it's not bad, huh? not bad at all. You have some problems at at, at uh, some some corner, but very very simple. You see the, the max deviation is very, very good. And almost 100% of the points are be, be, within a 0 0.3 uh, tolerance, which is quite good, OK? So my part is OK. I will be, if the part was scale 1, I will be able to replace it on my uh, on my loan hour. So I want, again, I want to thank Patrick, I mean, and Louis to prepare this nice material. And of course, I would like to thank you for attending. And as a guest star, my loan mower. Thank you for your attention. Remember that you can see everything if you go to the go.3ds.com slash Katia website. It's free of charge. You just have to, to connect yourself, give your, if you are not already, if you do not already have a DASA system um, passport, you can just connect yourself, give your email address, and you can access to millions of information, all my Katia Jewel talks, all the Katia talks from my colleagues. Uh, so it's plenty of information. You can also uh, chat together, you can ask me questions and so on. So again, I wish you a very, very nice end of day or beginning of day and uh, talk to you soon for the 20th um, Katia Jewel talk. It will be a little bit more complex. I will talk about dynamic behavior modeling for mechanical parts within 3D experience Katia. Thanks a lot. I don't know if we have questions, um, Anne? Yes, before you go, Daniel, thanks a lot to you too. And we have two questions from our participants. Yep. The first one from Cédric uh, is uh, mentioning uh, this comment, so comment based on sectioning to create the approximate, uh, approximate surface or mm -hmm. solid. Uh, mm -hmm. So Cédric is asking, is this comment new, a new one? No, no. In fact, we use everything which was already in, in, in Katia, and we just put together them to make a very, very quick access to all of them together. And with a split command, automatically generate, you know, a, a very small uh, process. So that's the idea. But it's not new. It's not new. OK. And the second question from Ariane is uh, about the, the user interface, I think. Uh, Ariane is asking, what is this page? as? Uh, as I do remember, Katia Page was something else. And I assume Ariane is wondering uh, if this uh, 3D experience Katia frame uh, is new uh, as well uh, compared to V5, probably. Ah, yes, yes. It's, in Katia V5, we had the uh, tools for reconstructed surfaces out of uh, scan data. They were called Quick Surface Reconstruction and Digital Shape Editor to just read in the import the points cloud data and do the alignment. Now, in 3D Experience Katia, we have embedded, we have, first of all, we have improved all the capability of Katia V5. Um, in, it's a, it's a nor different order of magnitude, to be honest with you. They are very, very efficient commands, which were not, which are not existing in Katia V5. Uh, and they are called Katia Digital Shape 
um, preparation and Katia Digital Shape to Surface, which I maybe we should change the name Katia Digital Shape to Solid or Surface. Okay, yeah, it was clear. Um, well, as uh, you already said, Daniel, uh, everyone can continue the conversation with you uh, on the Katia user community. Let me share very briefly my screen uh, to show you what you get if you go to this community. So um, this is where you, you can find um, uh, many uh, videos, articles, uh, demos, uh, of course, and uh, uh, and also other experts, Daniel, obviously. But um, yes, if you are uh, looking for Katia champions or other experts in the Katia user community, you can enter a keyword here and see who can answer you. And um, well, uh, don't hesitate. Uh, if you want to uh, continue the conversation with Daniel, don't hesitate to ask questions or, or post comments just here. Well, uh, thank you very much for attending and uh, to talk to you soon. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.